Hey, welcome back to Ask a Monk. Next question comes from Jay, who asks, Media addiction. TV shows, fiction books, popular music. These things can be a distraction when meditating for sure, but do you think they are okay to enjoy in moderation? What are your thoughts on media in general? Um, yeah, okay, well, the the agreement is that um, they are a distraction for, med for meditation. This is, I think, easy to understand. So easy for people to keep this sort of a rule during a meditation course. Most people. I do know people who have brought their guitars to meditation centers or you know, brought marijuana and tried to get high during their meditation course and so on. But mostly we can accept that we're trying to do something very specific here and um, that these things shouldn't shouldn't play a part in that. And that's really why when you read about the formation of of moral moral precepts in in the Buddha's teaching, um, you 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 don't have you don't see these in in terms of a lay uh, morality, the, the rules against entertainment and so on. For monks, we're not allowed to listen to music or um, watch shows or so on. This is something that is not uh, acceptable for a monastic. But for ordinary people, there are only the five rules, not to kill, not to steal, not to cheat, not to lie, and not to take drugs and alcohol. These are the five moral precepts, because these five things are, are, are obviously immoral and um, intrinsically immoral. They can't be separated from uh, an immoral mind. That being said, um, my thoughts on the media, I mean, the, the more important point than, than is it allowed or is it not allowed is, um, is whether it's, it's, it's beneficial, whether it actually brings happiness. And the truth is these things don't bring peace and happiness. They don't create a state of contentment in the mind. I mean, Buddhism or, the, or meditation is for the purpose of, of, of learning to just just be, learning to um, to be here and now, to exist in the present moment without having to be something or get something or without having to make our experience a specific um, pleasing experience, something that is going to stimulate us to be able to be here and now in any situation. And the truth about these things is they actually make us irritable, um, discontent, um, bored, um, e even depressed and, and so on. We, we, we are finding ourselves in this world more and more unsatisfied, more and more depressed and unhappy and frustrated and angry um, and feeling a sense of less self-worth the more we engage in this in greater... This, um, entertainment with greater and greater intensity um, now it's it's it, it's become you know the, so instantaneous that we can get whatever we want and yet we're finding you know people are more and more turning to drugs and and alcohol and, and even prescription medication to to relieve the the, the suffering that this is causing you can um, if you have any sort of awareness self-awareness you can verify this for yourself that these things don't make you happy they don't make you a more content and, and peaceful person they create states of, of discontent the inability to sit still the inability to uh, be happy without the stimulation that you require more and more stimulation just to attain the same state of of um, of 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 um, contentment or, or of, of pleasure and so I would say that that's in a Buddhist sense what makes things immoral is what do they do to you I mean the killing's not evil it, it's it's evil only in the sense that it creates suffering both for you and for the other person most especially for yourself because a person who is killed can theoretically be free from suffering if you know if you're if you're murdered but your mind is pure you can theoretically um, be at peace with that but a person who kills cannot the person who kills is is affecting their mind is is perverting their mind and and is causing suffering for themselves um, so that's what makes it evil the the in that sense you could say that these things are 
in a sense evil i mean they they are an addiction and really everything is like that anything that you cling to um, be, becomes an addiction there there is a tendency to want to deny this and i'm sure probably i'm going to get comments to this saying that oh no i don't agree music is something that you know brings you into this trance state and so on um and i suppose to some extent that's that's perfectly true and i would agree with that that there are certain sounds like chanting or even mu especially mu music as well that sends you into a trance sort of state and people say well that's meditative um obviously that's not the meditation that i teach and it's kind of beside the point the point is the attachment to these things your addiction to them the fact that you like them even the fact that you like that trance state that state of meditative bliss and absorption that is a hindrance to you yeah, the buddha said even um even trance states are are dangerous in the sense that one might become attached to them there's nothing wrong with these states in and of themselves and they can be actually useful for meditation the point is that that things like music have an appeal to them have create this stimulation in the mind in the brain um that, that gives rise to a pleasure stimulus and and you know and, and as a result an addiction because you you get you get what you want and and there's the, the chemicals arise but the next time when you want to get it you need more and it has to be more intense and so on as i've talked about in other videos and as can be verified by modern biology and and chemistry so um they're a distraction for meditation but they're also a path that is is not really conducive to to peace happiness and freedom from suffering so the use of these things in moderation is not a problem it's not going to send you to to a bad place when you die but it will keep you bound to to the wheel of samsara it will keep you you know going on and on because your mind is still clinging your mind is still creating um is still fixed on on coming back so i mean i think for most people in this world that's not a bad thing in fact for many uh, theistic religious people who have under, who have come to understand buddhism it's quite a relief to know that you have another chance and that you can come back um but this is obviously a fairly immature sort of um position or or understanding once once you take the next step and start to realize the ramifications you're like oh yeah well then i have to come back and do this again and maybe again and again and again and again and again um because you don't likely remember everything and eventually you're going to forget it and fall back into a place that is very coarse and um and uh, deterministic like the human world and it'll be very difficult and and you'll you'll fall into the same difficulties that you've had in this life maybe even worse so um yeah that's a little bit off track but that's what these things lead to this is the um opiate it's uh, something that keeps us asleep keeps us um you know it's like the the it's exactly the opiate of the masses it's something that keeps us from asking the questions that we should ask keeps us from having any um get up and go keeps us from developing and improving ourselves music is a very obvious one it's something that um you know they have all these conspiracy theories that the entertainment industry is controlled by the government who's trying to just keep us all happy well you don't have to go so far i mean we're doing it to ourselves where um where it or you can go even further and say the whole universe is 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 based on this way it's keeping us attached to rebirth so um our um uh, addiction to these things is is helping us to pass the time and allowing us to forget about the important questions like um old age sickness and death and suffering and why these things exist and how to become free from them then where do we go when we die and so on so from a buddhist point of view it it doesn't really make sense to give these things more than a a basic um um appreciation if you want to listen to music it's not a problem it's not going to um make you not a buddhist but buddhists do have an understanding that these things are uh, addictive and um that they can 
they, they generally lead us to waste time and um, and and lead to more and more suffering so and less and less satisfaction when you practice meditation you start to realize this and you start to give these things up naturally you start to become bored of them and say that you know th there's really no happiness or peace to be gained from this and and as a result you you find yourself just being able to just uh, live life as it were and to be present without needing anything without needing any kind of stimulus or special experience okay so long answer but uh, someone did ask that I talk about music so there's my take on it and um, you know, just a little bit more personal information it's not that I'm a person who never ex uh, enjoyed music I was a guitarist I had a Les Paul Deluxe $1200 electric guitar uh, I had a fairly extensive music collection and uh, was in two or three different ba bands um, so you know music is something that was very difficult for me to let go of but um, in the beginning I was very decisive about these things um, I understood intellectually what the teaching meant and uh, I appreciated that and I thought that has real meaning to me so regardless it's kind of like this I knew that these things were attractive to me I knew that I liked music but I also knew that that liking was the cause of my suffering because I was suffering I was you know deeply mired in these things um, they were my life and I was suffering terribly I was I was incredibly depressed and had no meaning in my life I felt like it was no, it's just these feelings that come up and they're based on addiction. It's a withdrawal thing or it's it's the addictive cycle. So um, that that's basically how I took all of these things, so many different things. I said to myself, yeah, I like it, but I couldn't, I couldn't, I didn't need to convince myself to let them go. I knew that this liking was the problem. The problem was not not getting the thing. The problem was the liking of it in the first place, which was causing me suffering. So... Uh, I'm not a stranger to these things, and I understand where pe many people are coming from, but um, with serious meditation practice, you do change the way you look at these things, and for the better, because you are obviously, we are obviously suffering when we're addicted to these things. There's no way around that, and I don't think you can convince me otherwise. Um, with the exception of those people who use it to gain a sort of a trance state, and sort of look at that as being the goal, as this state of, of of intense calm but even that is <clears throat> not permanent it's something that is conditioned and um, you know is a sort of an addiction and will create a dissatisfaction in your lives it has to do with ego and, and y you can see when you practice the type of meditation that I teach that this you know this state is inferior and there's still um, the mind is still not clear and not pure so um no I, I, that's how i look at it and uh, i'm i'm sure there are people with other opinions but uh well to each their own you ask the monk this is the monk's reply thanks for the question keep practicing